Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I'm making my way down the hillside. Got my gloves, my protective glasses, and my battery operated chainsaw. Gonna take down some uh, trees that fell down. A lot of around here we got a lot of oak trees that are getting diseases and they're pretty thin and small. Uh, some are tall, but they fall over my path and I only have to cut, you know, the part off that's in the path. But I came across a verse that I wanted to talk with the brothers and sisters in Christ. Revelation chapter 2 verse 6 And hath made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And the point I wanted to point out where it says unto God and His Father. Now first of all, this isn't the best verse, but I think it's a good verse when you confront a Mormon who believes Jesus is a created being you go that passage what's it talking about who's God referring to there because if they say well it's the father then you're saying that the father has a father <laughs> so there's two fathers and when you confront a Jehovah's Witness that believes the Archangel Gabriel was manifest in the flesh that's who Jesus was I think that's the right religion false religion <laughs> Uh, then you say, well, who is the, once again, who is that, the word God there, a reference to? Well, it's a reference to Jesus Christ. Now you hit the people up that are the Trinity believers. And you tell them, uh, who is God referring to there? Jesus. Well, in 1 Corinthians 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 6, it says there's but one capital G, God the Father. So, if you don't believe that Jesus is God the Father, then to them what it's saying there is the Father and His Father. And I thought that was pretty, you know, it's pretty, like I said, the Trinity theory, the more and more you study it, the more kookier it is, you know. You really have to hate the Godhead to really stand for the Trinity hardcore. So I wanted to share that with you, uh, setting down my chainsaw. Um, but yeah, this is what happens when you don't stay on top of uh, clearing the path. Out here with the rainy season, our winters, there's no snow. We get a lot of rain up here, which is good. Um, it helps so I don't go through a drought the next summer. And I'm going to be fighting, trying to do ways to save uh, water now that i built a garden. And I'm going to expand it a little bit. But um, this is what it should look like because I spent all day yesterday morning and clearing this path out. So you can see it all the way to the top. This is the path to my, uh, I call it a well, but it's not really a well, it's a cistern. That's the right word, it's a cistern. So this is what happens when you don't clear it out. <laughs> it's all bushed in hardcore all the way down to the cistern. And my secondary path up, there's another tree down there that fell down. And my other, uh, here's the tree I'm going to start on. But my other path down, the emergency path I have that's more steep, that goes up, it's like a secondary path, it's all full in and there's trees that fell down there. So I guess we get a lot of wind. Yeah, we get a lot of wind out here. So the trees that are dying and are dead, uh, the wind starts blowing through here and it'll knock trees down that are dead and weak. It even knocks like little small trees where the roots aren't rooted that well. So... But I wanted to share that verse with you. So those are that's a good verse to use also for Mormons and Jehovah's Witness. And it's a great verse to say, hey, who's God referring to? I had a brother in Christ that did a study video talking about how they're they're interchangeable. Okay? Capital G God is a reference to the Father. There's only one God, the Father. But who is it talking about there? Jesus Christ. So they can be interchangeable. They are one. God and Jesus Christ and God the Father are one. One and the same. So hopefully it's going to be a short walk and talk. i got to get to work cutting. Oh, I'll show you one thing. Um, it's no Husky 394 XP, but I bought one of these battery-operated chainsaws. And for the most part, for my needs, it works great. I got four battery packs for it. It's, it's got enough energy to cut down, gosh, not a huge, huge tree. If I switch out all the batteries, I've got four batteries. So that's like four hours worth of chainsaw. Um, you can cut down 
a tree like that right there easy with the chainsaw and then cut it up and a big tree you can cut a good portion of it before you need to switch batteries so that's what I've been using on this hillside so but I'll see you in the next walk and talk uh, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and uh, I'll see you in the next walk and talk